supports a lot of yeah a lot of great things you have yeah I'll shut up now because you have two travel agents on either side of me who can probably tell you a lot better than I can those are the things that I've observed I think the younger population coming through are have been raised to travel in the millennial generation and I think they're pushing a lot of interest not only in their generation but in their parents generation so I think that's a big component too anymore it's not a privilege or an option to travel if you're a US citizen it's it's almost an expectation it's a requirement to travel abroad and I think we're really seeing the benefits of that there is there's a real interest to a cultural information there's a real interest in cultural background and history and Americans really appreciate that and just what 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 Greece has to offer and I think you know taking it further as well it's it's very easy anybody can go online and research a destination but there's nothing better than experiencing the destination as itself so what you're seeing here from all the agents they are learning they're educating themselves and that information they then then take back to their clients much more so than any client can do any research online or even any agent who does not attend something like this so this puts this type of event puts them at another level in how they can offer better service and better information to their clients a lot of as the agents have been tweeting out putting posting on pictures on Facebook and it's really interesting is a lot of their clients are saying oh wow you're going there are you going to come back next year can you lead a tour and so it is this is there'll be some nice add-on business for the business owners here from the destination we run a survey every year that that asks what what are people what are agents selling what are agents particularly selling in the summertime and you know a lot of Western Europe does very well a lot of Caribbean because it's close and fairly expensive but you know Athens and Greece in particular there we don't we we don't do that sort of specific but once our agents come back from this event and start talking to their clients we could probably provide some anecdotal information for you Recently, they start joining up the UN and now Thessaloniki. Uh, I think they are quite important destinations that they visit. And we expect after the 365 plan of the units of the visit, to manage a bit of the winter time, American travelers. However, they combine tours from the European and Southeast uh, Mediterranean destinations, which is, you know, the Cyprus, it's Egypt, it's Israel. Uh, the countries that they decide to go in the cultural staff is over there. We are made our effort with the East Mediterranean Association as well. And definitely, uh, in the time, we have to mention something very important. If the retired people from the States, they have a wages a month here, so they can stay in Greece and spend this money in more than 65 days here. Cost of living in the winter in Greece, prices are very low. Destination are very important. The Greeks love the Americans. They treat them as friends. And the most of the time, they invite them home for lunch or for drink. I'll do the same to you. Um, and piggybacking off of what you're saying, uh, there's a big trend of remote year and people working remote. Um, in all different destinations and a lot of companies either moving people like one month at a time so they're experiencing more immersed but also cost of living is better because you're staying for a longer period of time um, and Estonia actually did kind of like a work abroad kind of visa for people is there any kind of idea or something that you could maybe um, create as a part of your program in there to entice people to stay for these longer like if they have flexibility to work remotely and they can stay for longer periods. Uh, first of all, if somebody wants to come and work in the country, he has to get the work permit. And it's easy. Mm -hmm. okay. Non American with visa to come to Yeah. There's no such procedure. So it's an easy way, easy access to come over. 
hundreds of lunch guys all over the world that have connections with any Africans as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of how them they may become and stay longer, mm -hmm. you don't need to stay long to get a better rate. Mm -hmm. The cost of living, the low season, so low so they can stay much more. I'll give you an example. In days two, in mm -hmm. the summertime, we give you an opportunity to stay in the winter time 35 days at least. Mm -hmm. So comparing what you spend in the high season, mm -hmm. so lower what is the same. But in the winter we have the benefit that the culture and the beauty of the country is so warm and mm -hmm. as they visit in Greece in the winter, they make us understand that we have to promote this kind of holiday. The customers I mentioned to us, make it, you're going to get more business. The customers are the people that we get the message. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are the associations, we are wherever we are, that's good enough. But if you don't hear the customer, mm -hmm. what does he want? It doesn't work. It's like the cruises. Mm -hmm. Any cruise ship, however, decide the new schedule, they collect in the last two years from the same passenger, what is the next wish, where to go. And then they have cruise programs. So we get the information what that these people want. Mm -hmm. So we have the obligation to, to meet and match the target of these people and give good trades to the agents so mm -hmm. we'll be able to promote it. Um, what is the average spending of uh, American tourists abroad? Do you have any numbers? <laughs> That's a, that's a really broad question. Yeah. Uh, what we're what we're shared with here is that Americans are the, the number eleven in terms of a population that comes to uh, inbound tourists from Greece, but number four in terms of spend. Now, perhaps the GNTO has has a better handle on what Americans spend within you know, on average they spend within within Greece. Tell me, this answer is very very easy. If you ask an American agent, or if you ask us, to give you the booking, definitely the room, the American standard, it starts up from 200 and goes up at night. <laughs> if somebody stay a week, so you have 1,400. Divide it into two, then you have per person. Plus the expenses, plus the transportation, plus the tools, plus the clapping, they spend money. Every builder spend money from all destinations of the world. The question is, who has the money to spend? Now we have an economic recession worldwide. So this is what we have to find out. What the customers need, how much they want to spend, and how smart we are in each country, because there are great competition in many countries, to see income and business, to offer the right price, the right stuff to please the people. About the so-called hidden gems, you know, the unknown destinations in Greece that Americans you know, want to discover. Uh, what's your feeling? Are they really interested into that? And what are they looking for in a place? Uh, safety, authenticity, wellness, experience? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Safety, wellness, uh, a new experience, something different that you can't experience back in the United States. And you have that. You have something that's extremely unique. And from the feedback you get during the conference, they're really interested in that, and the travel agents, they ask you about, I mean, apart from the classic places that everybody goes to, you know, are they asking for places, for these destinations, do they want to discover them? Yeah, the, the travel agents, or the mm -hmm. travel agents. The travel agents first, and yeah. then they will. Yeah, work. the travel agents, absolutely. This, this is a new experience to many of them as, themselves. Mm -hmm. some, of them, some of them have been here in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but those... Uh, you're seeing them right now. They're meeting with many of the suppliers right now and, and getting a better understanding of what the uniqueness is that is offered here. And that's exactly what uh, that's exactly what their clients want to hear. What makes it different? What makes it different than some other destination? And it's it's all what you just mentioned, cultural, it's safety. Safety is a big topic, it's anywhere you go now. Um, but all those features is very, very appealing. There's a, there's a real push towards experiential travel. Um, again, to the younger generation, they're really kind of driving that. And everybody wants something new, something different. They don't want to go to the same old places that their grandmothers went to and their fathers and mothers went to. Um, so anything new that our agents can bring back from an event like this is going to be hugely beneficial to the customers and to the agencies that uh, come back with that information. And, and probably they appreciate the feeling that they have, I mean, 
everybody likes to meet new places, but if you don't know about the place, you feel insecure. But if you have somebody you can trust, like a travel agent, guide you around, this is what they're looking for. Yeah, the real beauty of an event like this is the agents come back and they've experienced it. A, a good travel advisor can sell a destination that they haven't been to because they've studied on, up on it and they've read on it. Uh, but there's a little added touch and benefit if they've experienced it. They, they, they feel the passion for it at that point. Uh, and their customers will feel the passion coming from them once they visit it. So this is a really unique and incredible opportunity for U.S. agents to come and find some of those hidden gems mm -hmm. and uh, gain the passion for them. Mm -hmm. And the American clients, they're looking for that. I mean, people who they trust, who can show them around, and, and they also have Greek people who they can trust here, locals, and, and that's what they need to discover this uh, destination. <laughs> So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> if I could go back to you, you, you said the key word is trust. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the relationship that our, our agents have uh, with their clients. It's a trust factor. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they trust that they're also going to seek out the appropriate suppliers and the destinations to go to, just for those factors we mentioned, mm -hmm. safety, cultural, and so on. It all comes back to trust. I want to yeah. add some information yeah. from our research study about the price per person per trip. So on average, this is based off of our most recent survey, uh, this is just for the millennial generation, round trip transportation on average, $394. Nightly lodging per person on average 170, and tours and activities on average 287. And driving factors, <coughs> um, again, this is more focused on the millennial generation, um, but over 39% of the millennials travel <coughs> to see historic sites. That was one of our top driving factors. Second to that was to experience different foods and culture. That was 30% of our. Uh, respondents, and then third was to explore other cultures coming in at 26%. So if you'd like, uh, I can send you the executive yeah. summary yeah. of this research. Yeah. Just make sure you give me my card, or I'll give you, I'll my, give you card. my card, or you give me my card, whatever, yeah. and we'll uh, make sure that you get the executive summary of this. So Erica, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree then that uh, Gen X and uh, maybe even generation would spend significantly more? You would think, but according to our research, they're not. Not. <laughs> uh, coming in close, but um, the millennials are actually spending more in tourism activities. Than Gen, Gen X is a little bit are. above at 294, but that's because they're mostly traveling with children. Yeah. It's, it's an important distinction of what she just said, and, and that I think it need, needs highlighting, is that this is the first generation that said they want, instead of wanting to go and see something, they want to go and do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they're spending more on tours and mm -hmm. activities. So it's an, I think it's an interesting change. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't survey that. <laughs> no, but the the survey that we conducted last year is representative of the U.S. Census data, so it's a pretty good snapshot of each generation, why they travel, and how they travel. So, I'd be happy to send you the executive summary. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma Weissman from Travel Age West magazine in the U.S. And I'm wondering if there is any way to measure the success of this event, if you have surveys for the attendees, or, or what's in plan afterwards. You have we, some stats, too. You have some stats, too. Sure. Um, Emma, we do. We, we go out to, uh, to agents six months after the event, and a year after the event, and then sometime, sometime after that. That's, we don't have a set time other than those two. But we, we basically want to understand from agents if they've already sold the destination, how much. You know, we're able to track, you know, what's the average ticket price, how long is the average stay, what kind of things. So we'll have a lot of, we collect this information after the event in, in, those, in those two time increments. And then we can feed that, we'll feed that information back to the GMTO and to other partners here to fed HADA so that they can, you know, first of all, it helps them justify the investment that they make in, you know, in an event like this. But second of all, it's, it's great information to have, you know, to know, you know to, to uh, Lissandros' point, like how do you, how do you know if your customer wants? What do you watch what they're spending, what they're doing? So. 
Another point that, that we, I learned, we learned the other day that, Ameri that United Airlines is going to start flights from Newark here in May, only this next month. Is May 14th. That's a, that's a big sign. It's a really good sign, I think. I don't know if it's a seasonal flight or if it's uh, going to be... A seasonal. Oh. Delta is seasonal. Oh, this is United. Yeah. Delta and, uh, and, and, and American as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, caught the, you know, caught the attention of the, of the uh, U.S. carriers. Um, perhaps some of the, the foreign carriers who, who, are, who have made inroads there have gotten their attention with ticket prices and, and, and load factors. So they've added service, which is a very positive thing. I'll add to that, 98% of our attendees after leaving a destination expo will sell the suppliers that they meet with. So that's based on our research, that's 98%. And another 76% will, uh, sorry, 77% um, send their clients